Hi, and welcome all. We are just waiting another minute to allow people to log on. We hope you can see our video just fine. If you can hear us and see us, if you want to open up your chat, it's going to be the way that we can message back and forth during the presentation. And you can just let us know if for some reason you can't um, see us. So we're going to be talking about the immune system today, and you guys will notice that we titled it the body's defense system. And before we get going, we're going to um, have people just fill out a little poll questionnaire, and Dr. Rosalie is going to introduce it. So Dr. Rosalie, I'll let you take that away. Hi, all. So we'll start with a poll this morning. I guess it's the afternoon now. Uh, what is your go-to way for supporting your immune system? We've got a couple of options. One is regular exercise, two is sleep, three is supplements, four is stress management, and five are nutrient-dense foods and a, a healthy diet. So go ahead and chat your response and we'll sort of compile those and uh, we'll get back to it at the end of the talk. So just to introduce us, I'm Dr. Molly Forrest. I'm the founder of Prosper Natural Health, and this is our care team. We have Dr. Rosalie here today with us and Dr. Mary. All three of us are naturopathic physicians, and we do team care at Prosper, which is a little bit of a unique setup. What we do is all of us share a patient panel, and what's really cool about that is it means that you get three heads thinking about um, your issues rather than one, and it allows for our patients to get in and see us whenever, whenever they need to. So today our conversation is going to be about the immune system and specifically how we can use that to really defend ourselves. So what we're hoping to cover today is kind of a basic understanding of what the immune system is and then some nutritional strategies so that you can really integrate these things into your daily life to really support your immune system. And then different lifestyle habits that can help, you can implement to really help um, enhance your immune balance. So we wanted to make it really clear because this is a time of a pandemic that we are not making any direct health claims during this uh, webinar. This is information that we wanted to get out to our community, but because we are not seeing any of you individually during this webinar as patients, we're not telling you directly to start any specific uh, medication or um, directly take our, our medical advice there. So we just have to legally go over that. And then also we wanted to make sure you guys know, we understand a lot of you are very interested in what's going on with COVID and how COVID can impact the immune system and specifically about ways to really protect yourself. But we want you to know that that scope of, of that um, questioning in regards to COVID is not going to be directly covered in this um, conversation we have today because we want to really give you guys a good foundational understanding of ways that you can support your immune balance. Um, and we want to make sure that you know that with COVID specific questions and questions in regards to the vaccination, those are really individual conversations we're having with patients because it's so much goes into that. And as we go through the presentation, I think it's going to become really clear to you guys how complex some of the immune system responses are. So let's talk about the immune system. It really is truly our defense system. And what we want you guys to remember that is that it is protecting us from foreign invaders. And it's also helping us with tissue recovery. So what we mean by that is if there's cellular damage or 
tissues that are damaged, our immune system is really what is activated to come to our, our defense. So this is a very complex subject. And we're not immunologists, but we are naturopathic physicians. And we do consider ourselves definitely rooted in science. And so we like to really acknowledge that this is a complex um, mapping of things that happen in our body. And there's a lot of communication that has to occur. And we're going to talk about why it's so important that those communications occur and in a balanced way. And overall, we want you guys to walk away with strategies that you can implement right away to really help out with immune balancing. So it's important to remember that the body systems are very complex. We've identified in biology 11 major body systems. And what's really phenomenal about the immune system is it is not uh, linked to one singular system. It encompasses an interplay between all 11 systems. And there are some systems that seem to pull more of the brunt than others. And we're going to talk about those systems and why it's so important. In particular, we're thinking about the GI system here and our nervous nervous system and also our, our lungs. So when we think about these, we know that they're not happening, you know, in a vacuum. All of these systems need to communicate, but specifically with the immune system, the body needs to know what's going on with its defense system in these different areas. So there has to be this interplay. And then, of course, we also need to mention our barrier systems, which involve our skin and our mucosal layers. And we're going to talk about that as well. So let's talk about specifically within the immune system, we've got these different immune organs, we label them. And we see that we've got first and foremost, these tonsils and these adenoid tissues. And they're going to be really important for supporting us against things like upper respiratory tract infections whenever we have a virus, or bacteria that gets inhaled, fungus, any kind of foreign invader that our body doesn't welcome. That's one of the first tissue systems that's really going to let our immune system know if there's, if there's an issue going on. We also have the thymus. And the thymus is really a very specialized organ. It's considered our primary lymphatic organ, um, and it helps create our T cells. And we're going to talk about more about what those are in particular in a second here, but that's part of our what we call our adaptive immunity. And that is right here in our, our upper chest. We also have our lymph nodes. I kind of like to think of those as highway systems uh, that are connected, like the lymph tissue coming through um, in our lymph vessels, delivering to little cities. And these little cities or high population dense areas are our lymph nodes. And these lymph nodes are scattered throughout the body, but we see quite a bit here under the armpit in the axillary area. And then we also see them in our chest and quite a bit in our stomach area, in our um, GI system area, in our um, um, in our intestinal area. We also have the spleen. Now, our spleen is going to be really important for helping to remove damaged red blood cells or malformed red blood cells. And it's really kind of our quality control, and it helps clean um, our, our blood. And then we also have these Peyer's patches. Now, Peyer's patches are part of this gut-associated lymphatic tissue, the GALT, which is found in the intestinal area. And that's a big deal because 70% of our total immune system is found down here in the gut. So as you know, as naturopathic physicians, we're often talking about ways to really strengthen our gut. And that in turn helps our immune system stay in balance. We see our appendix here. Now that's often taken as something that, you know, is um, not a very helpful organ whenever it acts up and something that we can remove easily. But it is actually considered um, a immune functioning organ. And it does have lymphatic tissue in there. And it helps with bacterial 
uh, levels in the gut. So it is a, an important part of our immune balance too. Now with bone marrow, we think about that being the spongy, spongy tissue with inside of our bones that really contains our stem cells. And these stem cells are gonna develop and turn into our red blood cells. They help carry the oxygen throughout our body. And then they also help with um, our white blood cells, which are going to help fight infection, and then platelets, which help with our blood clotting. So the other piece here that you see down here, just even more lymphatic um, uh, nodes. So once again, those are like the high density population areas in our um, lymph system. So when we're thinking about the immune system, we really look at dividing those, the category of the immune system into two specific categories. And the reason we're going over this is because it kind of helps us think about how things normally are supposed to be functioning in our body. And so it helps us really understand when we're doing strategies to support our body, we wanna make sure that we're really balancing both of these sides and supporting both the innate and the acquired immune system. Now, I just had a newborn niece this weekend. So it was a good reminder for for me, when a new baby is born, what is intact with their immune system and what isn't? So the innate immune system is called that because it's what we are born with. And the acquired immune system is something that we develop as we are exposed to different pathogens and different external um, situations. So the innate immunity is going to be like those, I think of it like the physical barriers, right? Our skin, our mucous membranes, our saliva, um, the stomach acid, those are all physical barriers that we are innately born with. And then we have um, this other side, which is the acquired side, and that's where we get into our T and um, B cells and our, our antibody and antigen reactions. So this is considered the adaptive arm. It means that it's adapting to what we have personally been exposed to. And it's pretty phenomenal because it allows us to recall these immune reactions that we've seen in the past and come up with a quicker immune response once we've seen those. So the initial interaction with the foreign invader can take a little bit longer to tag um, on the initial onset, but then after, once the body has seen that, it can make a quick recall for a quicker immune response. So we have the difference there within the acquired immune system between the T cell and the B cell immunity. So stay with me here. I know this is getting into a lot of the, the um, biophysiology here. So with our T cells and our B cells, we have what's called the humoral immunity. And really, we see this difference between the humoral and then the cell-mediated immunity. And the difference really is here having to do with how these antibodies and antigen reactions are occurring. So when we think about our adaptive immunity and the innate response that we're essentially born with for our immune system. There is some overlap here within the cells that are activated. And we see the, the B cells creating these antibodies, the T cells here um, producing this really important reaction as well that's going to help us understand if there's a, a foreign inv invader and how to attack it. And then we have these natural killer cells um, as well and these natural killer T cells. And they work actually within both sides of the adaptive and the innate immunity. So the most important takeaway of this portion for you guys is really that we want a balanced immune response. So we know that just as dangerous as an underactive response is an overreactive response. And in our society today, we're seeing more and more overreactivity of the immune system. And unfortunately, we're seeing more self-tissue being tagged by the immune system. And what that equates to is autoimmunity. Um, and then we can also see proteins that are inappropriately being tagged through something called molecular mimicry where the body sees something and thinks, oh, that's a foreign invader that's not supposed to be there. But really when it's something pretty inert like a food um, 
or something like a pollen. So we start to see these allergic reactions happening, happening more in the overreactive sphere. And then we also see autoimmunity. So we really wanna make sure that our immune response is as balanced as possible. And the other piece there is when we don't have enough, of course, we're more susceptible to frequent colds and flus. We're more susceptible to uh, mold and fungal imbalances in our environment. And then we're more susceptible, we know, to issues like cancer and then other um, issues with recurrent uh, viral infections. So we're thinking about things like shingles or herpes simplex for that kind of um, issue. So we see all kinds of reasons for either overreaction or underreaction, and we want to be thinking about ways to really balance out our immune response. So what can we do to absolutely work on keeping our immune system, our immune defense really strong? So we sent out this poll here to you guys, and you're welcome to type in your answers into the chat, and we'll talk about that at the end. And those are just talking about strategies that you really like to implement that can help you, um, that you know that really seems to help you with your own immune response. And... Um, when we're thinking about ways to optimize our immune system, we don't want to just be focusing on one component. So once again, as holistic practitioners, we're trying to think about not just lifestyle modifications or certain healthy foods we can eat. We might also want to be thinking about different herbs or supplements that we can implement. We're going to talk a little bit about essential oils today. And then we're going to go back to gut health because remember, gut health is just absolutely critical with 70% of it of your immune system being there in your intestinal area so let's start with lifestyle because we can get so much just from our lifestyle um, support so we really want to be taking these um, personal measures with our hygiene and this um, pandemic has really made it um, come to the forefront of our attention, a lot of us, about cleaning our hands and making sure that we're really careful about wiping our mucous membranes, whether it be our nose or our eyes, touching our mouth, eating food before we've had our hands cleaned. So that basic sanitation of soap that suds, because that's what helps break down the bacteria and viruses and rinse it off properly. So soap that actually suds and um, good old water makes a huge difference for us. Also things like hand sanitizers. And of course, we want to choose non-toxic um, hand sanitizers as much as possible because we know that some of the chemicals that can be in those can actually be endocrine disruptors and affect our hormone functions and our sex hormone balances. So we also want to be thinking about stress. And if you guys were here for our Doc Talk last month, that's what we focused on. And if not, you can go online and listen to it. And really, we're trying to focus on things that can roll back our stress levels. We know that cortisol, which is one of the major hormones that's initiated with stress, has a pretty significant impact on our immune response. And we talked about that during the last talk. We also know that sleep, we cannot get um, changes with our immune response without having a balanced sleep response. And this is a big deal because in our society, a lot of times we're looking for something quick, whether it be a technology support or a, a pill support, something to help us. Um, but if we don't have the basic sleep component down, our body will not be able to have that time to recover and to do that really important release of the hormones and chemicals that help um, mediate our uh, our antioxidant levels and to really help us with those the protection that's needed um, as far as the tissue repair that's that can go on while we sleep. Exercise, of course, is going to be really important. We know this; it's very established in the medical literature how critical it is that we're moving. Now, one of the really big reasons for this that people sometimes gloss over is actually that the lymphatic system, when we think about the lymph vessels, they run right underneath your uh, blood vessels, right underneath your veins, and they don't have a, 
a heart to help them circulate. Those um, highways, those communication highways, if you will, of lymphatic fluid um, are really moved only by muscular contraction. So that's a big deal. If we're stagnant because we're in front of our computer all day or we're not getting the walk we need or we are just in a car all day or something like that or even on travel days um, on an airplane or something like that, we get really stagnant, especially in our lower extremities. And um, we might not have that circulation through our lymphatic tissue that's really needed to help our immune system do that patrolling that it really needs to be doing. So it's really important that we're getting our daily movement, including our stretching and including our walking as much as possible. So don't forget about the importance of that. We also know that, of course, this helps manage our cortisol levels, which is, once again, a big deal with immune response. We also want to limit any kind of toxins coming in, and this includes our alcohol consumption. We know alcohol is seen not only in the body as something that's a little bit harder for the liver to deal with, but it's also seen as a sugar. And we're gonna talk about why sugars are, are not gonna be helpful here for our, our immune response. So let's talk more about our foods. We know that our foods make a huge difference. Remember, this is, information, information packets, chemical information packets that are coming in and affecting our genes. They're also impacting our immune balance in a, in a huge way. So we're going to want to be thinking about foods that are really supportive for our overall immune balance, things that don't trigger an overactive immune response. When we're brainstorming as naturopathic physicians, just some of the most powerful foods for immune regulation that can be included and kind of categories of foods that can be included, we know that, that bone broth has a lot of amino acids in there that are considered to be really helpful for the gut lining. And once again, this is a big deal with that gut-associated lymphatic tissue. Ginger, we know, um, can really help as an antioxidant-rich food. It's considered a warming food that helps with our circulation, can help with our immune system, and it can help with our inflammation, combating the inflammation in our body. Green tea has been shown to reduce inflammation, but also has been shown to help support the immune system and the immune balance as an antioxidant. Vitamin C, many of you guys think of that whenever you're starting to feel a little bit under the weather. The vitamin C rich foods include categories like not just our citrus, but also things like our broccoli, our uh, bell peppers, our kale and cauliflower family, the entire brassica family, which is like that cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli family. And then we also think about our beta carotene foods. And beta carotene foods, I like to think of them as kind of the, the orange or yellow foods. So that's things like not just our oranges, but also things like our mangoes and our sweet potatoes. Um, and those are going to be a precursor. That, that beta carotene is a precursor to our vitamin A. And we know that our vitamin A is just absolutely critical for our skin and our mucous membrane systems. So those help with that in immunity, right? That helps with our, our barrier system. So, and don't forget, of course, about things like carrots and our squash um, and cantaloupe, uh, apricots, all of those orange foods. So you're going to hear a trend in a lot of our dietary recommendations, which is eat that rainbow, have the color colorful foods because they're going to be nutrient dense for us and even phytonutrient dense and things that modulate our immune response. So let's talk about supplements because that is a big one for a lot of people having a lot of questions about those. Vitamin D becomes one of the top, uh, top supplements on our list here in the Northwest as naturopathic physicians because we know that vitamin D is absolutely essential for how the immune system functions. We know that it can help reduce viral growth and help with upper respiratory tract infections. We know that it is found in just a handful of foods, and most of them are animal-based products, like things like liver um, has a fair amount of vitamin D, um, egg yolks, 
technically has a little bit, and so does um, mushrooms. Salmon is one that has one. Some of the fattier fish do. Vitamin D is something that most of us Northwesterners benefit from supplementing, but definitely testing a minimum once a year to check and see what those levels are. It's, it's um, very toxic to take too much vitamin D. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, and as a reminder, so is our A, our E as well, and our K. So all of those fat-soluble nutrients need to be taken with fattier foods or in the delivery system that has some fat um, in there with, with when you're taking that supplement. It helps um, to absorb those, those fat-rich uh, nutrients. But this vitamin D is also, of course, really challenging to get even in our sunnier days because of how um, how much UV light that we end up getting here um, up in the Pacific Northwest. So it's an important one to think about and an important one to check in, um, yeah, for immune system. And also I also think of like bone health being a really important one for vitamin D levels. So for me uh, and uh, Dr. Rosalie and Dr. Mary, we're usually liking to see those vitamin D levels come in somewhere between 60 and 80. Uh, a lot of people ask about uh, vitamin D level preferences, but for the immune response in particular, we like to see those levels up in uh, the 60s or 80s, which is hard to do naturally uh, here in the Northwest unless you have a frequent intake of liver in your diet. As far as zinc goes, that's another go-to that a lot of people already know about as being an immunomodulatory uh, supportive mineral. It's one that our body needs for a lot of enzyme reactions. And when we're, we're thinking about zinc, we know that it does have a strong antibiotic antiviral property. It's found in things like pumpkin seeds, seafood, and also sea vegetables. Certain beans and legumes have some zinc as well, um, and then oysters as well. As far as NAC goes, you guys may have heard of this one. This is a precursor to a very strong antioxidant in the body called glutathione. And glutathione is a really important one because we know that it does a lot of cleanup work. And when we we're talking about the immune system be being connected to all these other tissues, it's also very much connected to our brain. And glutathione is one that we know can pass through the blood-brain barrier as an antioxidant and help with oxidative activity damage um, to our neural tissues. So we do want to be thinking about that connection and how do we support the immune system through our antioxidants. So NAC is one that, that we kind of think about being supportive of that glutathione pathway mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms. There's a lot of research specifically on reishi, but we know that these medicinal mushrooms have an antioxidant and they also have antiviral properties and they can be very helpful for immune support and immune balance. As far as vitamin A, um, we talked about that a little bit when we talked about the beta carotene already, but remember it's supportive specifically for the mucous membranes and we think about it being supportive for the skin as well. The vitamin C, once again, contributing to various functions um, of our cellular immunity and our immune response. As far as our herbs, these are some of the herbs that we just love um, as far as being supportive and having some good research behind them. Elderberry, we know, is really high in vitamin C. It also contains some dietary fiber and several antioxidants. And this one is one that has been used um, in the past to support um, support against influenza. In particular, there's a lot of um, questions that have come up in regards to its safety with things like COVID. And once again, um, we're trying to be really individualized in our recommendations about that with, with patients. But elderberry is kind of an herb that's been near and dear to our hearts as naturopathic doctors. It's considered to be a very um, 
easy to take and well tolerated um, herb for most people. Astragalus root is another one. Um, seems like less people know about this one, but it's uh, kind of a traditional herb, once again, for more of the common colds, upper respiratory tract infections. It's considered to also have some cardiovascular benefits, um, and it is one that is also considered to be pretty well tolerated by most people. Turmeric and curcumin is one of my very favorites because it's such a strong anti-inflammatory. It is has been shown to decrease some viral activity, which is pretty cool. And turmeric is something that, of course, we can include in our foods. And oftentimes, we are actually giving it, supplementing it as naturopaths in much uh, higher doses and forms that have already been bioconverted. And one thing I do usually mention to my patients is a lot of times turmeric when you buy it over the counter from uh, a various supplement company, it'll come with um, black pepper in it. And the reason they do that is black pepper is known to irritate the intestinal lining. And we know that that irritation of the intestinal lining actually helps with the absorption of the curcumin, the active um, component there of the turmeric, which is what we need for the anti-inflammatory um, action. We don't usually recommend that uh, long-term in our practice. And the reason is, is we don't want anything that's gonna be irritating the intestinal lining. There's so much, so many issues for people with food sensitivities and um, disruption of their gut flora and their, uh, their gut regulation of their immune system that we usually shy away from using products that have black pepper long-term um, if, if they're using it for an anti-inflammatory or for immune balance. So there are products that that is already bioconverted and, and that's what we try to stock here, at least um, for our patients. As far as the andrographis goes, that's another herb. It's used it both in Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine. So both Dr. Rosalie and Dr. Mary know even more about this um, than, than I do for my practice, although I've used it for years as well. It is considered to be uh, an anti-inflammatory herb and it has antioxidant properties and is also considered to be antiviral. And then there's echinacea, which many of you guys, oh, I skipped over, sorry, I skipped over skull cap. So this is also one that is used for um, supporting that innate immune function. It's said to reduce viral growth and specifically help with lung specific inflammation and injury. Um, as far as echinacea goes, that's one that has been very well studied um, as well. And it, it's known to be an immune modulator as well. It's used um, traditionally, both topically and internally to help with tissue repair as well as immune support. In regards to essential oils, a lot of our patients really love essential oils. They can be very strong. So we're cautious about quantities that are given, making sure that our patients have really healthy kidneys and liver before they're starting in on these. But there are two we wanted to mention today. The first is myrrh. And myrrh is one that's known to be bactericidal, which means it kills bacteria. It's known to really stimulate white blood cell um, reactions. And um, in, in test tube studies and so not in, in human, not in vivo studies, um, they've used it to uh, help kill bacteria that had drug resistance genes. So it can be very strong as an antimicrobial in that regard. And oil of oregano, many of you have probably experimented with this or heard of it before. It's considered to be also a very strong uh, bactericidal. So once again, it's pretty strong about fighting bacteria. And then also in um, treating things like intestinal bacterial overgrowth, different fungal infections. It's considered to be supportive for wound repair. And then it can also be used for um, reducing inflammation and helping provide extra antioxidants. Now, oil of oregano in particular, when taken as an essential oil, is one that's very, very powerful. So I always like to really warn patients about doing that because just taking it can really affect your gut flora balance, the good guys too. So we have to be cautious about that.
Now let's talk more about gut health because it really is primary here when we're talking about immune response. We have these connections, this conversation that's constantly happening within the gut to our generalized immune system. And we have those Peyer's patches that we talked about before in this gut associated lymphatic tissue and then the appendix in there as well. So remember that your probiotics is good, this good flora that has um, populated your intestinal track is really regulating to some degree our, not even to some degree, it is regulating our T cell response. And this is a big deal when we're talking about autoimmunity. This is a big deal whenever we're talking about immune responsiveness. Um, we really want to be making sure that we have the proper probiotics in the proper amount, in the proper area. So we don't want too much in our small intestine. We want these really to be more colonized in the large intestine. And we want to understand that our macrophages, which is part of that innate immunity, are constantly sampling down into the lumen, the tube of the gut, sampling um, and seeing, do we have excess bacteria that's not supposed to be here? Um, it's, it's constantly doing this immune testing, essentially. And so those probiotics help ward off uh, overgrowth of infection and other pathogens. Um, and then they also, once again, send these direct signals to our adaptive immune system, which is pretty wild. We also know that glutamine, which is part of our amino acid uh, I think of it like a little chain link fence or barrier system along that mucosa in the gut is a really important nutrient that we need to have on board. And a lot of people end up supplementing with um, glutamine to really help reduce against intestinal permeability because when our gut is too permeable, remember things that are not supposed to slip through, slip through. So large glycoproteins from foods that we can inappropriately tag and um, all kinds of things that can cause inflammatory reactions, whether it's chemicals that we've eaten uh, or even uh, bacteria and um, viruses, funguses that have gotten through. And then we also have um, phytonutrients, of course, that can be really helpful for healing our intestinal tract. And oftentimes I'm thinking about things like aloe as being a really helpful one there um, to help out the, the immune system. So one of the biggest pieces in regards to supporting the immune system is reducing that inflammation that's coming on in the body. And that, that tends to be uh, quite a frequent theme for us when we're talking about how do we balance our health. So we have to look at regions that are inflamed and mitigate that, really try to reduce that. And one of those ways is reducing our toxic load. And when we're talking about that, we're going to actually, this is such a big topic that next month our doc talk is just dedicated solely to detoxification, cleansing, how we can support um, to really reduce your toxic burden. Because we know know that that is something that just fuels the inflammatory reaction. And when inflammation is happening, our immune system is activating all of these different cells and then they're sending these cytokines and prostaglandins, which are basically chemical packets saying, inflame, inflame, do damage to the cells. So we really want to quell all of that, but first and foremost, identify and get rid of these toxins. So let's talk about food plan that can be really helpful um, for balancing our immune system. We've already kind of gone over some of the food groups that we want to make sure that we include in our diet, but let's talk about specifics. So miso and bone broth. So for our vegan um, patients, we often are talking about miso as being a really helpful, supportive here. If you are not vegan and you're open to having bone broth, combining the two is a beautiful, um, holistic uh, option for you. So miso comes as a paste. It also comes as a dried powder. Now, in our practice, we're typically recommending the paste. 
it's refrigerated, it's alive, it has probiotics in it. It is a fermented soy product typically, although they do make non-soy misos. There are ones that are made out of things like chickpeas or even brown rice. So there are other options for you if you're soy intolerant, but when you're cooking your miso, please do not boil it. It is never traditionally boiled. Now, why is that? Do we wanna boil our bacterial friends? No, we do not. So make sure that it is added to our our broth or our um, stew or soup or what water even after it has come down from boiling so it can be warm but not scorching hot so mix that in stir it in it's a delicious flavor it is just really soothing and um, really is wonderful I also also, we'll use it as dressing for veggies, um, just mixed into a little bit of water and poured over steamed veggies. My kids even like it. So with bone broth, the best would be to be making your own. And my quick tip for that, my little hack, because you know we're all kind of pressed on time these days, but my quick tip is whenever you have veggie scraps, whether it be the casing for your onions or the tops of your carrots, throw them in a Ziploc baggie in your freezer. And when that Ziploc baggie gets filled up, empty it into your crock pot, instant pot, or a big, uh, you know, cooking pot on the stove, and um, start making yourself some bone broth. I usually put in a splash of two or two of apple cider vinegar in there. And what that does is it allows for more acidity to help make, break down the bones. Now, you can also buy bone broth that is already made for you. There's liquid or dried. Once again, we prefer the liquid. It has more nutrients often um, that haven't been potentially, potentially uh, gone rancid because of heating or anything like that, but um, we, we love we love bone broth as an option because it's a high protein but high nutrient dense um, product that's going to have in it some of that that glutamine to help with the intestinal lining so as far as our um, seaweed products go, remember this is one that's gonna have some of that zinc in it. It also is gonna have a whole bunch of other minerals in it. So it even contains iodine and things like that. So here on the Pacific Northwest, you know, it's pretty easy um, to go out and gather some of your own. You just rinse it and allow it to, to dry. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's a process, but the, and make sure you have a license because it doesn't require a license through Fish and Game to collect it. But it is out there right here, you know, in our, in our backyard, if you're, if you're close neighbors here with us. Um, otherwise, buying it is pretty inexpensive, and it works really well as kind of a condiment. So it's something that we'll just put dashes of it on our, um, on our rice or on top of our soups, stuff like that at home. And a little bit goes a long way here. Now, as far as our whole fruits go, remember these are gonna contain a lot of those beta carotenes if they're orange, but also those vi the vitamin C. So everything from our lemons and oranges and citrus fruits to papayas and our berries and our kiwis are gonna be high in our, um, in our whole fruits. Now we do have the caveat here that we don't wanna have fruit juice necessarily or be juicing our, um, our, our fruits a whole bunch because that takes away the fiber and is going to be a much higher sugar hit for you. So typically we try to limit our whole fruit servings to about three a day and really focus more of our servings on the vegetables because of the sugar content. So when we're thinking about our veggies, especially those non-starchy veggies like um, our asparagus and artichoke hearts and our broccoli and our Brussels sprouts and cabbage, those are going to be high, the broccoli in particular, you know, high in vitamin A and our carrots high in that beta carotene, that vitamin, um, that vitamin A and, and broccoli with the C, cabbage with the vitamin C. Um, we think about all of those. I like this picture because it encapsulates that idea of eat the rainbow. Don't forget about things this time of year. The, the spring greens are starting to come up. So the collards, uh, the things like the, the bok choy, the 
baby kale, those kind of things coming in. Um, also, your parsley and um, some of your spices that we think of more like condiment spices are great to be including in things like your smoothies. So this is a great time of year to start some of those smoothies. They don't have to be really cold, um, but those smoothies in the morning to get those, those green veggies in and really thinking about layering your rainbow in there. So, you know, thinking about like your blueberries and then, you know, ha having these different colors so and it could be powdered for these but we do prefer fresh whenever possible once again because of those those antioxidants so as far as our root veggies go they're also going to be nutrient dense and remember a lot of these have these beta carotenes in them like the acorn squash and um, we think about beets being a really antioxidant uh, dense, even though it has a little bit of sugar in it, and these root veggies tend to, they're still going to be part of our balanced nutrition here in regards to these nutrients. So the things like the, you know, pumpkin and our squashes, and then our yams, our sweet potatoes, our parsnips, and our carrots. And don't forget here with root veggies, onion. So our onion and garlic family, absolutely critical. I know they're not stars on this. You can I'm kind of here um, to kind of meld in, but don't forget about how important those are. And they're going to contain our quercetin, which we know is part of our healthy immune balance. So quercetin is an anti-inflammatory immune modulator that's found in the onion skin. So when I'm saying keep the onion skins, throw it into that plastic bag, make it into your bone broth, throw some bones in there and those veggie scraps, um, that's, that's getting that, that quercetin, which is kind of makes those onion skins kind of yellowy um, when it's in high high amounts. And that's helpful for our allergies, right? It's helpful for our immune reactions, um, especially this time of year. So as far as healthy fats, we know that those are found in those fat-rich fish, but also things like our olive oil, our coconut oil, our, um, our um, avocado oil, those kind of things. We like to really be careful about the oils that we heat. Remember, heating oil is going to oxidize it, and that's more of a challenge for our immune system. So we want to really be giving ourselves the, the best benefit we can by only cooking with high heat appropriate oils. So a good example of that is your uh, avocado oil. And then things like fresh avocados are good quality nuts and seeds, making sure that they're not rancid tasting, making sure you keep them in the fridge or freezer if you're not going to get to them um, soon. Flax and um, chia seeds being awesome examples here for us as well. So we talked just a moment ago about oils, so this is just a reminder. If you've got a really good quality olive oil, probably it should be eaten fresh and raw rather than cooked with. Um, once again, because of those strong antioxidants in there, we don't want those to degrade with the heat. So don't forget about the beauty of our vinegars. They're going to also help with our immune balance by supporting our gut breakdown of our foods um, and helping nutrient capture from our food. So this is a really great thing to be having on our greens, that oil and vinegar tr uh, traditional combination. Some are sh more sugary than others, like our balsamics versus our apple cider vinegars. But in my opinion, if you're not doing a whole bunch of other sugars, this is a very healthy and safe way to be having a tiny bit of um, good quality uh, carbohydrate in your diet. Gluten-free grains, so the reason that we make this distinction here away from gluten is because so many people have gluten intolerances and don't even know it. And so many times if your immune system is inflamed or you are having um, hyperimmune reactions, you may be having uh, intestinal permeability and these really big glycoproteins of um, gluten and gliadin could be Le leaking through your intestinal tract and your body might be tagging them inappropriately. So once again, we're trying to remove everything that could be inflammatory for us and really supporting ourselves with the, the gluten-free grains like the quinoa, the brown rice, the wild rice, the buckwheat, um, having pasta and noodles that are made with quinoa or or uh, millet or buckwheat instead of, or brown rice instead of our gluten containing grains. Um, and don't forget about your, you know, amaranth and uh, gluten free oats as well. We do want to kind of limit these servings as well. We tend to, as Americans, kind of go overboard on the grains. So these starches, in my opinion, should be limited to one to two times a day, um, unless you're, you know, uh, 
an athlete that's just absolutely burning through your carbohydrates, uh, usually twice twice a day is is kind of my my cap off for that. And then as far as um, our meats go, if you are having meat or poultry or seafood, making sure that you're getting them from a really good reputable source, making sure they're, you know, free range, grass fed whenever possible. Local is always the best. You can get to know your local farmers. We've got awesome farmer farmers markets here in our area, so we're really lucky to be able to have access to good quality foods. But there are also, um, you know, companies that will ship these to you. It's not the best for carbon footprint, but we do want really good quality if you're deciding to have those in your diet. So we want to really um, limit our consumption, of course, of any kind of factory, um, factory raised farm animals. So as far as the seafood and fish, there's a lot of debate about this. Um, we know that when it's wild caught, it's going to be lower in mercury and other toxins. We know the smaller the fish is, the lower risk you have as well. So that's things like your anchovies, sardines, herrings, herring, that kind of thing. It's going to be the smaller fish, but the larger fish tend to have more of those heavy metal um, levels in them. So thinking about, you know, really trying to, once again, just making sure that it's not uh, factory fish and trying to think about the type of fish as well. So here we also have to remember that we're getting a whole host of really healthy fats, which are going to be critical for our immune balance with those uh, EFAs, those, um, those omega-3s helping with regulate our inflammation in the body and that's helping with immune balance and then also our vitamin d there are also a lot of these um, seafoods in particular are going to be higher in selenium so we think about brazil nuts for um, the more vegan option for selenium and then we think about things like our um, some of our, our shrimp and um, and some of our other seafood like oysters for for those minerals and then as far as eggs go, remember that we're going to want to have those whenever we can, um, be free range eggs, um, eggs that are not just cage free, but are able to go and be pastured. And um, that means that they're getting to eat what they naturally would be and not just supplemented solely on grain, um, because that affects the choline levels and a lot of the other nutrients that are in the, um, in the eggs themselves. So we want to to try to have those, you know, organically raised whenever we can. And we do typically try to not go overboard on eggs, but it's something that we don't want you to necessarily shy away from. They've gotten a lot of a, a, a bad name in the past, but good quality eggs are theoretically anti-inflammatory. So as long as you don't have a food sensitivity towards them. Um, now, same thing is true with our dairy substitutes, because if we have a dairy substitute that's a nut that you react to, obviously you don't want to be having that. But generally, staying away from dairy, because once again, so many people have immune reactivity and inflammation from dairy or the way the dairy has been processed, especially the lower fat milks and things like that. So we want to be thinking about the plain, unsweetened versions of these, or even making them fresh at home. There's nothing quite like it. They're going to be full of antioxidants for you that way. And there's lots of recipes online for these. Legumes, I like this picture because it's a good example of eating the rainbow once again. Lots of different colors in here, and that translates into the different antioxidants and the different phytochemicals that are going to be helpful for immune reaction. Now, we also think about uh, legumes in particular being high in our zinc and um, being high in our fiber. And remember, our fiber is going to help with as a prebiotic and help with our flora balance. So that, that translates into your probiotics and translates into your gut health. As far as sweeteners go, we don't want you guys to necessarily shy away from honey. The natural sweeteners like honey contain a lot of really cool immune modulating support. So you guys might have heard of that in regards to like propolis in particular, um, bee pollen, those things being helpful for allergies, especially if they're locally obtained, then the bees are going and sampling the pollen around us. And so it actually has been shown to be helpful for reducing some of the 
those seasonal allergies that people have. So please do include just a moderate amount. We don't want, you know, huge amounts of, of honey, but typically I try to keep it, you know, under one to two teaspoons a day of one of those kind of sweeteners. And maple syrup is going to be okay if you sparingly. It doesn't have that same immune modulating response effect that the honey does, but it does contain some really important nutrients and um, some, you know, other nutrients in there that are considered to be phytochemicals that help us. So as far as our herbs and spices, once again, this is the rainbow analogy. So remember, color is good. So don't shy away from these. Um, you know, mix, mix up the flavors for yourself. And it's not just things like turmeric, but also making sure you're including even simple things like your cinnamon, um, paprika, those kind of things, as long as you tolerate, once again, there, it always comes with the caveat of food sensitivities. If it's if it's a no for you, avoid it. But we want to have these different these different colors. So as far as foods that we want to just absolutely avoid, of course packaged and processed foods are kind of right up here on our list. Most of them are pretty devoid in nutrients, which is one of the big problems. They also are going to affect our salt balance in our body. That's going to lead to fluid retention and our body's going to be translating a lot of that as inflammation. So we don't want to be having those. Um, we know that alcohol, once again, is something that's going to really tax our liver and potentially kidneys. And this is problematic in regards to how our blood sugar is regulated as well. We know that those really starchy veggies, like just a whole bunch of potatoes that are just plain potatoes peeled without, you know, having those, those nutrients that are found in the peel are not going to be a healthy thing to be having on a, a daily basis or in excess. It's just translating into a, um, a starch at that point and it's just ending up, you know, kind of going on the, the scale of being too sugary for our body, too much carbohydrates. Dairy products can be really problematic for a lot of um, people. So if you're really serious about getting your immune system rebalanced, it may be worth pulling that out and really trying to consume um, non-dairy products or really getting your other healthy fats away from the cow dairy, um, potentially also the sheep and um, goat dairy as well. Gluten-free grains, we kind of talked about the gluten grains being potentially problematic for a lot of people, so that makes sense. And then as far as soda, of course, it's going to be sugary. A lot of our car carbonated be beverages nowadays are not sugary, but if they are, they do tend to sneak in some fake sugars, which can be pretty nasty for the body, um, a lot of those sweetened beverages. So just read your labels, be a, a cautious consumer. Sweeteners, as we know, those synthetic sweeteners actually affect our flora. So this is a big deal. They've done all these mice studies where they've literally fed these mice sorbitol and these different um, synthetic sugars and switch their gut flora uh, within, you know, a few days, which is pretty, pretty wild. So we do not want to be, um, you know, dysregulating our good probiotics with synthetic sweeteners. We also, of course, have these processed fruit juices. Remember, that's going to translate into sugar, and we know that sugar affects our white blood cell um, response, and that is not good for us. And we also know that the factory farmed um, and processed meats, of course, are going to be more pro-inflammatory, so we want to stay away from those. Candies and sweets are going to, once again, be really damaging in regards to the immune response, and especially, um, you know, when we think about things like the combination um, synthetic uh, coloring and food dyes and things like that being in those. Condiments, just be really cautious. Once again, read the label. So you'll find in things like fruit spreads, jellies, even ketchup, there can be a fair amount of sugar. So read, because there are usually options that have lower amounts of sugar for those, or things that you can even make at home or alternatives that you can come up with. Processed broths, just be cautious about some of the store-bought um, chicken broths. I'm not talking about the good quality bone broths here, but the store-bought bought, um, chicken broth and bone broths, a lot of times they're just uh, yeast and different flavors that are put in and are very high in um, in sodium. So we wanted to give you guys a tool that could help you 
with your immune balance. And many of you who have been here for our last two Doc Talks have found that we have been um, introducing these programs to people. And we're really excited to do this because especially this year, this last year with the pandemic, um, getting to have you know individual um, appointments with people has been a lot more challenging. So getting something that's in your hands that you can do right away as far as supporting your system, we think is pretty cool. So we've been um, working to make these different health programs. This one is specifically for immune balance. And what it does is it uses this app, this Well World app, and it allows you to download it and have it on your own personal device, on your own phone. And it's gonna help you, give you specific foods, meal plans, recipe ideas, even shopping lists. And then there are, um, different supplements on there as well that we're going to talk about, which are recommended if you want to kind of take it to the next level. So what this allows you to do, though, which is super cool, we think, is you can track your health goals, you can track your health metrics here, so how things are going for you, how you're feeling um, as far as everything from energy to mood to weight. Um, if you're getting the things like the meditations done, there's different videos that are that are on here um, that will help. So there's a lot of different educational content for immune support. So because remember, we're trying to approach this from a multi-prong approach, um, including our lifestyle balance as well and our stress regulation. So with this um, with this immune system program, you can go onto our website, which is prospernaturalhealth.com, and under the programs tab, you'll see our different programs listed, and that's where you can find the link for it. We'll also send it to you now in the chat. But what it allows you to do, once again, is you get this health tracking app, and then it also is going to give you that accountability. And then you also, if, if you want it, you get this um, ebook, which is very, I think pretty cool. It's pretty detailed in regards to intestinal health and immune health and how they're connected and things that you can do to really support um, that interconnection and that balance. So this is a picture of what it would look like on your phone if you did end up getting this and it kind of helps you with your goals. It allows you, there's two tiers for our program. So they allow you to talk back and forth to us as physicians if you decide to do the guided tier with us. Um, and it also provides this plan. So we wanted to show you what it looked like. So there's an area to click like for what you can eat that day or what we recommend that you eat that day and different um, recipe ideas, shopping lists, those kind of things. And they're very specific, which is really helpful. There's also supplements. These are an added uh, option for you. We find that people who use those get more out of the program, but they're certainly not required. You'll get quite a bit of benefit from doing the diet and lifestyle modifications as well. So we just wanted to tell you a little bit about what those are so they're not a surprise. So we'll talk about that more in a second. And then there's a, another area here for videos and supportive documents. So there's quite a bit of content here um, that's gone into the creation of this, this program for you guys. So um, these are some of the documents. For example, there's exercise um, supportive videos and things like that, and then videos on meditation and, and breathing reminder, reminders. So let's talk a little bit about the, the supplements that we chose to involve in this program. Um, essentially, there's a packet of immune support supplements that you take, and it's an easy packet, and you open it up, and there's like four different caps inside. Actually, it's five. And then there's a, um, a probiotic, because we talked about immune support being so important. So we've got a zinc product here, which is, we talked about why zinc is so important. There's a really cool C product as well, and then D. So you'll want to make sure if you're already taking D that you're on the proper amount and that you're not over taking too much of that or too little. And then there's N-acetylcysteine. Remember, we talked about glutathione being really important as an antioxidant to support your immune system. And then there's a product called Immunotone Plus. And that one is really those herbs, a lot of those herbs that we already touched on today. So it's got your echinacea and it's got your stragulus in there and it's got some andrographis and it's got some elderberry in there. So, and, and uh, green tea as well, uh, non-caffeinated. So you will not feel uh, caffeination jitters from that. So this 
basically it's just a tied together program for you guys to make it easy if you're feeling like you want uh, a guided a guided program so pretty easy you go online you register and then you'll get emails for exactly how to download the app and get signed up one question we do get is people ask well um, i went on to well world and i downloaded the app and it says i need a physician verification and you'll get that as soon as you sign up through our website it has all the information bundled in for you so that's that's on there rather than going on your app store on your phone and, and um, downloading well world directly so just remember when you do this you'll set your start date because this is a 28 day program that walks you through exactly foods and and gives you all kinds of tips and things like that so just make sure to give yourself time to clean out your fridge and get prepped and pick that start date and then the same thing is true if you decide to order supplements you order it right there through the app um, it'll have exactly what what we're recommending there for this program and uh, it will ship right to your door but just remember to give it time with shipping because this is a wild time um, in regards to getting getting things shipped so it may take a week or two before you get those products although they are coming direct from the manufacturer to your door so hopefully not that long so um, once again that's the the website and we'll send that out in chat and then you could choose one of the two programs um, if you'd like to the two different tiers. So the basic one is $37 and that's for people who just want to jump right in and feel like they're ready to get going on a 28 day kind of reset for their immune response. And then the expert, expert guided tier allows you to message back and forth with myself, Dr. Rosalie and Dr. Mary. And um, we think that it's a pretty cool one because it's a HIPAA compliant application. So it's private messages back and forth about um, um, any concerns that you're having with the program and then we also are able to see from our back end are you doing the exercises are you reaching your health goals how is you know how, how are you doing if you're entering in the information we can see are you getting enough water during the day that kind of stuff so we really hope that you utilize this tool if you feel like it'll be helpful for you or share it with friends and family who might um, benefit from it because we feel like you know tools are very helpful and accountability makes a huge difference so this is you know in your hands here so that is the link and we also want to just remind you guys that next month we're going to be talking specifically about uh, holistic cleansing and detoxing and that's a really fun one to talk about here at the transition of the seasons into spring so let's go ahead and open this up to any questions you guys might have and we'll just have you type them into the chat here and dr mary and dr rosely if you guys want to unmute and we can answer these questions and um, also just add anything extra that you might want to if anyone has any questions they're welcome to answer them otherwise we hope that you guys got some really important tips out of today and got some questions answered about the immune system and how it works and things that you can start doing right away in regards to your diet and lifestyle i just wanted to share the poll results Those oh thank you who, uh, contributed to the poll and the number one stress reducing tool is exercise for folks in this group. This is the perfect time of year to do that. Get out there and, and get some, some movement, especially those walks through the woods. We know how important that is for our neurologic system. And remember, the, the brain and that, that spinal cord and all of those nerves are directly um, communicating with the immune response. Thank, Thank you, you all for joining. That was a really great talk. And I just want to let everyone know that I have a link in the chat if you are wondering where that link for the immune program is. It's right here um, in the chat for you to uh, check out. So I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. And thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dr. Mary. Thanks, Dr. Risley. And thank you all for joining us. We will see you guys next month. And we will be posting this online. You should also get an email about the replay here in the next day or two. So be on the lookout for that. And we welcome you guys sharing this information with any of your family and friends. We really want everyone to have as balanced and as strong of an immune system as they can, especially these days.